Hi, my name is Kimo Johnson. I'm co-founder and chief science officer at GelSight Inc. This is GelSight technology. It's a high resolution 3D surface scanner that when you touch it up against any surface, it reveals the detailed topography of that surface regardless of its optical properties. This technology was invented at MIT really around the idea of being a tactile sensor and thinking about what happens when our skin touches a surface and deforms in contact with that surface. Here we've engineered a flexible reflective skin, but inside the system we have a high resolution camera and optics. This system when combined with computer vision and artificial intelligence methods can do very detailed measurements of any surface. I'm going to show a couple examples on parts here of the types of measurements that we can do. Here's a metal component, and often in many different industries, there are tight tolerances on different dimensions of the surface, such as surface roughness, the depth of any dents or scratches on the surface. And without our tool, sometimes these dimensions can be difficult to assess. So here I'm going to look over the part, and I see a small defect. With the tool, I can press it in and make a measurement of that defect. When I press the button on the system, it works like a camera, but instead of taking one picture, it takes six pictures with different light directions. Those six images give us enough information to calculate a very detailed 3D model of the surface. In our software, we can open the 3D measurement and perform a lot of different calculations. The first thing I'm going to show is how we can measure the depth of a small scratch on the surface of this part. I'll choose the offset tool and drag a line across it. We can then level the surface and set the max and min points. The red is used to set the max and I'm telling it to average the height of the surface in that region. The blue is set to find the minimum. And here it says that that scratch is approximately 14.6 microns deep. After we've done the measurement, we can quickly go and create a PDF report that has both a view of the 3D surface and also an image showing the measured location. This can then be saved and shared with other people interested in quality control in this part or saved as a digital record of the issue. One of the common uses for this system is assessing surface finish, in particular surface roughness. Here on the table I have several different metal parts that have different amounts of machining. And we can use the system to characterize that. First I'll press it into this surface. And I'll make a measurement. And here is a second surface with different machining marks. After we have our measurements, we have a variety of ways that we can analyze them. One of the simplest things to do is look at roughness, like RA or SA. And in many cases, that's sufficient, because there might be a spec on what the RA or SA needs to be for this component. But in other applications, where the surface finish is not as well described by those parameters, we've had great success with a new AI module that we've built into our software, where you can train the system by capturing hundreds of measurements of a part A, hundreds of measurements of part B, and the system will learn to distinguish those. But first, I'm going to just show how these two parts differ for both RA and SA. In our software, we can open these measurements and look at different types of roughness. First, I'll start with profile roughness. With our profile roughness tool, we draw a line across the surface, and it tells us the RA. Here it says 6.77 microns. With our roughness tool, because our system measures a full area, we can calculate more than just the RA of a single trace. Here I'm showing that we can calculate 11 traces over a two and a half millimeter area and the average RA of 6.8 microns. This produces a more robust and repeatable measurement and it's something that would take a long time to do with a traditional roughness measurement tool like a stylus profilometer. Because we have an area, we can also calculate aerial surface parameters, such as SA and SC. Here's an example of calculating the SA of the surface. And you can see that this can be 
a richer description of the surface that's not as susceptible to the direction at which somebody draws the line. Now, I had also measured this other part, which has different surface characteristics. So I'll do the same measurements in this part. Here we can see the roughness goes in a different orientation. So the natural orientation of this roughness is vertical. You can see it's a much smoother part with an average RA of about two microns. I can also choose to do multiple profiles as I did before. And I can also do SA. So as you can see with our tool, it's a very fast way to measure roughness parameters of a surface, and much faster than competing instruments, which often exist in labs. This is a tool that can be down on the factory floor, can be used in a handheld setting, and has a relatively large area. It measures approximately 8 millimeters by about 5 millimeters in its area. So while I just showed some basic examples of measuring a defect and measuring roughness, the tool is actually useful for a wide variety of tasks. You can look at the quality of engraving. You can look at chamfers. You can look at hole diameters, hole circularity. There's plenty of interesting things that exist on the surfaces of components, and we'd love to hear about new applications that you might come up with. For more information, please visit our website at www.gelsite.com. You can also reach out to local Hexagon distribution as we're in connection with them as well. Thank you for your attention.